I heard this song, this song that I'd never heard before. All of us in the station came out to our amazement. When we looked to the, the, the area of, the, of La Sofre, it was just, just ash, just ash. Looking at the atmosphere, the ash, it was, at some point it was amazing and at some point it was terrible. At one particular point you thought it had ended and then you only to hear, oh, there has been another eruption. Um, so that is something I wish somebody could have told me that, oh, it, would, it was erupting and it would erupt for one day or two days, but that, that's not how it works. A friend from Kingston called me. He said, Cariff Chief, you hear anything about the suffering? I said, no. He said, well, somebody said they went up there and they see signs. So, well, that get me aware that I must. So, it's about a day after I feel a tremor. We feel the tremor. And then we feel in the tremor going more, going, you know, harder and harder and harder. So, it get we scared. So, we start to prepare. Together with the government, the scientists, you know, it was easier than 1979. Because the scientists giving reward on the radio which he did a marvelous job, Mr. Robertson. Thank God for you. And we tend to have this saying in St. Vincent that uh, God is of incension and that nothing was going to happen. Because I have an idea of 79, I was small, but I have an idea of how it couldn't happen, um, you know. So I packed, I got my Jeep ready, I got my children ready, and we moved out about say about nine in the night on the way we're down you know traffic jam vehicle people you know rushing to and fro you know it was kind of frightening night for me and the children all the time the scientists giving us information we we kept we kept our bags packed you know we kept things packed we we had our bags just to take up and move at the time of moving. Everyone was posting something. It was just everywhere, WhatsApp, Facebook, everywhere everyone was posting something. But I followed like Nemo and any government official site or Facebook page and NBC Radio. We have a responsibility as a national broadcaster on the island to basically go into full 24-hour mode. We did that for 32 days uh, during that period. In fact, uh, we started sleeping at the corporation from the night before. But on April 8th, when, when I slept at the station on the floor, um, on a, a sheet, <laughs> that, that's what it was. I mean, we, we, we knew that we had to, to find a way to serve our people. People think the ash was just the, the soft, you know, those soft ones that fell and looked like snow and whatever. No, but the ash was also the heavy gravel, like, so there are different sized particles. On the road? It would kick up, it would, it would just store up the ash and you won't be able to see anything. Even if you, you have your hand right in front of your eyes, you can't see it. I know of one young man, he came and when I saw him, I saw his face with, you know, like burn spots. He said um, to me, Miss, you know how my face came like this? Um, I stayed back up there instead of coming out and it's the um, ash because he came from Georgia he said it's the ash that burned him and burned up his face. Seeing the, these people coming in, some with their bag, some, um, some seems lost and as a walk in the shelter, our, our look, our facial expression has to send that positive message and we tried best to make them feel reassured and calm in receiving them, in signing them up, in settling them and making them feel comfortable. My home was flooded out after the volcano. You know, everything would have on um, under mud. So, you know, I couldn't come in and it pays my heart when I comes in to see my home, you know, because it's really heartbreaking to see inside full of mud. You know, the clothing, swimming, the bed on mud. You know, everything was so dirty, so that pays my heart. And I want to let people know that, I mean, things like these, again, they must really take it serious because you never know the aftermath of it. So you ha we, ha we all have to be prepared at all times.
we prepare ourselves with biscuit and juice, you know, and non-perishable thing then. Clothes, your towels, you know, your important documents. Water was going to be one of those necessities that you're going to need for your force, maybe your first couple of days. So I, I want to say to other people across the Caribbean, especially if you are living in a, in a, 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 on a volcanic island, please ensure that water be one of your top priority. Because once the ash start falling, it's going to affect your water system and you're going to find yourself without water um, maybe for weeks. I didn't know it was so serious at the time, but um, the experience taught me a lot. And as an educator, how to prepare my children, the nation's children, to tell others about preparation. When you're giving warning by the authorities, whether it be in NEMO, UV Seismic, um, in this case, generally, if you're speaking generally, the Met Office, these are the professionals, these are the individuals that are responsible for getting the information to you. And official information, verified information, scientific information. And if it is that you decide to listen to hearsay, rumors and otherwise, then it is an opportune time for you to revisit that way of thinking and look at going to the authoritative sources for information. Being prepared. Preparing stuff better. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared at all times. Be prepared for the unexpected.